There are millions uh, and thousands, some who listen to us, Lord, who don't have daily bread, and we pray for their daily bread today. And, Lord, even if they have to go stand in a long line or sit in their car in a long line, Lord, to get the food, help them to move forward and to do what is necessary to feed their family as you have provided for them their daily bread. And we thank you for doing that. And, Lord, pray that you deliver each and every one of us from evil and sin today. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to love right, live right, think right, and do right. Again, I pray that you grant me your grace, your strength, your anointing, and the power of your Holy Spirit to read your Holy Word. Uh, Not only to us here, but to uh, the many people who are gathering around who understand of the simple reading of the word. And Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I pray that you cast out the devil and the demon and the satanic demonic spirit of Judas, betrothage and foolishness, Lord, out of the hearts and minds, souls, spirits and lives, Lord, of the people here, of the people out there who have that problem and Lord we pray that you would cast out the satanic demonic spirit of hindrance Uh, these people who do not have any joy in serving you they have no joy in what you do and the results that you bring about for you Lord must bring the results about it's hard for some of us to take but it is true It is not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, is all about you and what you uh, want to bring to pass through the means of your holy word, your holy spirit, your holy gospel. But we have devilish people who don't even rejoice over what you do miraculously. They don't rejoice over souls being saved, they don't rejoice over Christians being saved. Uh, revived and prayers being answered and so Lord I pray that you drive those demon spirits out of their lives and help them not to be like Judas and Sanballat and Tobias help them Lord to love you back to trust you to fear you to obey you and to be faithful to you we pray that you will uh, bless and anoint the reading of your holy word not only to us here but to those out there save those who are lost revive those who are saved and holy father god we pray that you will heal those who are sick and uh, comfort those who are grieving we cast all of our cares upon you for Lord, we know that you care for us have everything we do here this morning to be done for your glory your praise and honor and uh, for the salvation of the lost and for the revival of the saved in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, uh, believe it or not, he wants to do the same thing over here. And yes, even foes in the family. This is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International with the White House Daily 
devotional Bible reading, episode number 270, where I simply read three chapters of the Holy Bible in the King James Version each day with my family as a part of our family uh, devotions to encourage you to read the Holy Bible uh, in a year's time with your family and if you are single and, uh, and, and if you're struggling to pray and to read the Bible uh, as so many do, even people in the in families they struggle with this because your flesh does not want to do it. You don't want to do it. The devil does not want you to do it. There are people in your family who don't want you to do it. So it's a battle. It, it will be one of the greatest battles you fight. Make sure that's on. It will be one of the greatest battles you fight in this life as a Christian. And I know some super-duper Christians will say it ought not to be, but it is. And if it's not, you, you might not be a Christian yourself. It is a battle. Today we are reading 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 19 and Job 28. Uh, one of the reasons why I like doing it like this, uh, the main reason why when, you, you, when you're ministering to other people, no matter what you're doing, nobody likes uh, to see the person in the pulpit or behind the podium looking down the whole time so I thank God we have people who help me with this uh, and so and so another reason why I do it this way uh, because I do uh, have people help me, helping me with this it forces them to stay awake and not read I mean and not go to sleep and it forces them to read the Bible with me so it is a good situation so that's uh, two of the reasons why we do it this way. Because most people have found out one of the easiest times to go to sleep is when uh, it's Bible reading time and praying time. Sister Elizabeth Elliot said, The Word of God I think of as a straight edge which shows up our own crookedness. We can't really tell how crooked our thinking is until we line up with the straight edge of Holy Scripture. And that is so true. Uh, James talked about how that the Word of God is like a mirror. Uh, and it shows us all of the ugliness in our lives. Dr. Thomas Fuller said, just not, that, that is J-E-S-T, just not, don't play with the two-edged sword of God's Word. 1 Kings chapter 18, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah which was the governor of his house. 
Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land unto all fountains of water and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou that my Lord... Elijah and he answered him I am go tell thy Lord behold Elijah is here and he said what have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me as the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, He is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here. Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me, but I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. <clears throat> from my youth. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and uh, the prophets of Baal, four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves, four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. 
And Elijah came unto all of the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are four hundred and fifty men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put it and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answereth by fire. Let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many. And call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure, he sleepeth and must be awaked. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. it. And Elijah said unto all of the people, Come near unto me. And all of the people came near unto him, And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And uh, they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice 
that Elijah, the prophet, came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure to read in your hearing the Word of God now at First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about 
this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept, under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my face, rather they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I even, I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go return on thy way to the wilderness, of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And 
Jehu, the son of Nimshisha, thou of Nim, uh, Nimshisha shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So he departed thence, and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him, and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen, and ran after Elijah, and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose, and went after Elijah, and ministered unto him. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure, and I mean that, the great pleasure to read in your hearing the Word of God now found at Job chapter 28. Job chapter 28. Surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone. He setteth an end to darkness and searcheth out all perfection the stones of darkness and the shadow of death the flood breaketh out from the inhabitant even the waters forgotten of the foot they are dried up they are gone away from men as for the earth, out of it cometh bread, and under it is turned up, as it were, fire. The stones of it are the place of sapphires, and it hath dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vultures I have not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. He putteth forth his hand upon the rock, 
he overturneth the mountains by the roots. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks, and his eye seeth every precious thing. He bindeth the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth saith, It is not in me. And the sea saith, It is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, and neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven, to make the weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then did he see it, and declare it, he prepared it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Shall we pray? Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ we praise you and we thank you for your holy word Lord help us to think on these things throughout this day and throughout the remainder of our lives help us to never forget what we read today Lord help us to meditate on your holy word to love it to cherish it and to obey it to apply it to our lives in the ways that you see fit by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Holy Father God, help us to share your Holy Word with others in ways similar, similar to how we're doing this now. And then, Lord, help us to preach the gospel, to proclaim the gospel based upon your Holy Scriptures so that others may be saved from the power of sin and from the punishment of sin in that awful place called hell, and saved to heaven to be with you. In Jesus Christ's name I do pray and forsake. Amen. Other things? Big? The sound? Okay, good.
Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with the triple uh, devotional suite, which focuses on the Word of God, the Holy Bible. So, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. This is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International with the Scripture and the Sense podcast. Episode number 606 where I read the Word of God, the Holy Bible, the Old Testament, and the New Testament eventually, here a little, there a little, and give the sense of it based on an authoritative commentary source, such as the Bible Knowledge Commentary, and or the Matthew Henry commentary or some other reputable commentary, respected commentary, or study Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is based upon Nehemiah in the Holy Word of God, chapter 8, verse 8, where it says, Ezra and the Levites read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. The aim of this podcast is that through the simple reading of the Word of God, the Holy Bible, with prayer and the giving of the sense of it, it is my humble prayer that the church would be revived and that the world would be awakened and saved from the wrath to come and the eternal burning hell through believing the gospel, believing in Jesus Christ as he preached the gospel so wonderfully so long ago when he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, believe in him today in your heart. Believe in your heart that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, and pray and ask him to save you. Today, beloved, we're reading Micah chapter 5, verse 12. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word. Have your Holy Ghost, your unction and your anointing to help us to read it and to understand it uh, with or without commentary help. Help us to lean on your Holy Spirit, not on anything else. Help us to love it and to cherish it, and to apply it to our lives, and to obey it, and to share it with others, and to share the gospel with others. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. Verse 12, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Ladies and gentlemen, I just read in your hearing Micah chapter 5, verse 12. Now here is the sense of it from the Bible knowledge commentary. Besides destroying enemies from outside Israel, the Messiah will purge the nation of every trace 
of occultic and idolatrous evil practices which were enemies within. Witchcraft is used in the Old Testament only here and in Second Kings 9.22, Isaiah 47.9 and 12, Nahum chapter 3 verse 4 as well. In the last three of these verses, the NIV renders the word sorceries. The Hebrew word suggests seeking information from demonic sources. The casting of spells may refer to using demonic powers to exercise manipulative influences over others. Though prohibited in the law, these and similar practices common in the ancient Near East were attractive to many Israelites throughout much of Israel's history. Do you remember Saul and the witch of Endor? And I'm adding that. Occultism will be practiced in the tribulation period, but it will be wiped out by the Lord in his kingdom. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, cast out every demon in every family that names the name of Christ. Cast out every demon and every witchcraft spirit out of the hearts and lives of every person who has that issue and problem in every one of your churches. And Lord, we pray that souls and people would be delivered from the occult and from demon activity and sorcery and witchcraft and help people to understand, as I said earlier today in an earlier meeting, that if a person is proud, stubborn, and rebellious, and they're practicing witchcraft, and they're just like the devil. So, Lord, we pray that you deliver people who claim to be Christians from acting like the devil and doing what the devil does. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and even foes in the family, now, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International, with the White House family devotional reading of Charles Haddon Spurgeon's morning and evening podcast. This well let me say it this way. Uh, this is uh, the reading of Charles Spurgeon's famous devotional book titled Morning and Evening and it is famous because it is based upon the scriptures and uh, no doubt uh, 
the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, was anointed of God to do it. One of the best devotionals ever done. And this is the podcast. This is episode number 216. Our scripture passage today is, of course, chosen, was chosen by Charles Haddon Spurgeon long ago for us. And it is John chapter 12, verse 21. And it reads, The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Evermore the worldlings cry is who will show us any good. He seeks satisfaction in earthly comforts, enjoyments, and riches. But the quickened sinner knows of only one good. Oh, that I knew where I might find him we would see Jesus. When he is truly awakened to feel his guilt, if you could pour the gold of India at his feet, he would say, take it away. I want to find him. It is a blessed thing for a man when he has brought his desires into a focus so that they all center in one object. When he was 50 different, when he has rather 50 different desires, his heart resembles a mire of stagnant water spread out into a marsh, breeding miasma and pestilence. But when all his desires are brought into one channel, his heart becomes like a river of pure water running swiftly to fertilize the fields. Happy is he who hath one desire. If that one desire be set on Christ, though it may not yet have been realized, If Jesus be a soul's desire, it is a blessed sign of divine work within. Such man will never be content with mere ordinances. He will say, I want Christ. I want Christ, I must have him. Mere ordinances are of no use to me. I want himself. Do not offer me these. You offer me the empty pitcher while I am dying of thirst. Give me water or I die. Jesus is my soul's desire. I would see Jesus. Is this thy condition, my dear friend? At this moment, hast thou but one desire, and is that after Christ? Then thou art not far from the kingdom of heaven. Hast thou but one wish in thy heart, and that one wish that thou mayest be washed from all thy sins? In Jesus' blood, canst thou really say, I would give all I have to be a Christian? I would give up everything I have and hope for if I might but feel that I have an interest in Christ. Then, despite 
all thy fears. Be of good cheer. My dear brother, my dear sister, the Lord loveth thee, and thou shalt come out into daylight soon, and rejoice in the liberty wherewith Christ makes men free. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, so much for your holy word. And thank you, Lord, for using your servant. So long ago, he being dead, yet speaketh. What a gift. What a talent. What an anointing you placed upon him. I believe with all of my heart you used him as a glue to help a sometimes struggling and wayward church hold it together and keep it on the straight and narrow. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for all of it is due your name. Now, Holy Father God, with this powerful, and Lord, even I didn't know he was so evangelistic, particularly because of some of the things that he taught and believed. But this man had a heart after your heart, Lord, for the gospel and for lost souls, which we don't have and we don't see that much of today. And so, Lord, uh, people still are hungering and thirsting to see Jesus. So lift Jesus up at this moment, Lord, as I dig down deeper on the gospel and help them to understand the gospel and how to be saved using Spurgeon's work as a foundation uh, and your holy word, the ultimate foundation. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> Now, dear friend, if you are with us today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ in the free pardon of all of your sins as your Lord and Savior, here is how you can be saved from hell and walk with the Lord morning and evening in this life and then in the life to come up in heaven. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. And understand that all people have, for the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have done evil. In God's sight, we all are sinners and criminals in God's sight, and therefore we deserve to go to hell because of our sins. For breaking the Ten Commandments, let me help you to understand <clears throat> what the Ten Commandments are, just a few of them. See if you have committed any of these. Have you ever lied before? Have you ever disrespected, dishonored, and disobeyed your parents before? Have you ever lusted after somebody you're not married to or something? Have you ever coveted what other people uh, have? Have you ever stolen anything regardless of the value? Have you ever taken God's name in vain? If you heard some of the shocking things uh, Trump's older sister said about him uh, you will hear someone who takes the name of God and Jesus in vain that's what we're talking about have you ever done it yourself don't worry about what they did have you ever done it yourself well if you have if you broke just one of those things you're guilty of breaking the whole law according to the Word of God. And so we're all guilty, aren't we? Second, 
Accept the fact, dear friend, that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin. That punishment is death, physical death and eternal death in hell. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. We die because of our sinful nature and the sins we choose to do. Our bodies, when we die, go to a grave, to the funeral home, hopefully first, and then to a grave of some sort. But our souls are already in hell if we have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if we have never believed the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and bled and died on the cross according to the scriptures for our sins, was buried and then rose on the third day. People who don't believe that in this life go to hell forever. And hell is a very real place. For Jesus Christ described hell this way. Hell is a place of weeping and wailing and grinding of teeth, gnashing of teeth because of the pain. Hell is a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Jesus Christ, dear friends, the meek and lowly and loving one, the humble one, preached more on hell than he did about heaven. He preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible, any preacher, any prophet, any writer. Hell is a very real place whether you accept it or not or whether you believe it or not. Don't be shocked at people saying they don't believe that there's a hell. There are people who don't believe that there's a COVID-19 uh, coronavirus plague, but yet thousands are dying every day around them. One time when Jesus Christ was preaching, he said in Matthew 18, 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. So you need to understand that if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, you're on the road to hell right now. You don't have to commit another sin. You've already committed enough. You've committed so many sins, you can't even count them. But God knows how many. Because he keeps good records. Well, who's going to hell, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, But the fearful... People too afraid to trust Christ because they want to be politically correct. They want to be accepted in certain jobs and in certain groups. Uh, they don't want to be persecuted. Uh, they don't want to be castigated and ostracized by their family and friends. And uh, the unbelieving are not going to heaven. They're going to hell the lake of fire, the so-called atheists and agnostics, the pagans, the unbelievers, go to hell, go to the lake of fire. And the abominable, the abominable people are those who sin beyond the pale. God does not only call what they do a sin, but he calls it an abomination These are they who are perverts, grown men and grown women who don't want to get involved with somebody of their own age. They want to destroy the lives of young people, even babies. They go online and place pornographic pictures of themselves with little children. perverts, child molesters. These are they that when they go to jail and 
the murderers find out about them, they get killed. That, that that's see because even the murderers say, "No, you can't. You uh, we can't. We can't let you live because you raped the baby. You raped the child." You raped the little girl. You're going to die up in here. That's what the murderers say. These are they who uh, commit the evil and the abomination of incest. Uh, having a demonic attraction to your own family members, your own flesh and blood. <clears throat> this includes stepfathers and stepmothers. You are not to have an attraction of any kind. It is abnormal. It is uh, beyond, out of bounds. You are not to even think this way. <clears throat> A father ought not to be interested in any way, shape, form, or fashion in his own daughter, including stepfathers. A mother should not be interested in her son in a lustful way. A brother should not be interested in his sister in a lustful way. A sister ought not to be interested in her brother in a lustful way, in any way, shape, form, or fashion. That should not even enter into your mind. And if it does, and you're trying to pursue that, you are abominable in God's sight. You're committing an abomination. God tells you, and it goes beyond that. You are not to be interested in your aunt. Aunts are not to be interested in their nephews, and on and on. These things, some of you right now, you're cringing because you know that that's beyond the pale. It's beyond the pale, I don't care if you like it or not, it's beyond the pale of uh, a normal attraction between people of the opposite sex, be they single or married, that's evil too. If they commit, uh, if they have sex together, it's evil too. God would judge, uh, God judges people who do that as well. But it's, it's, this right here is beyond the pale. This is beyond abnormal. People who, and this has been going on, sad to say, God had to deal with it in his word years ago. It's an abomination for a human being to be attracted to an animal, an ox, a horse, a mule, a donkey, or whatever you want to call it, a dog, a cat. And we got people today who love animals. You hear me and you hear me well, and you know it's true. You have people today who love their pets more than they love human beings. And they spend thousands of dollars on their pets. And, and we've got this thing, the big thing going on now. And the pets ought to be hu eating human food and so forth and so forth. They can't, and they can't be, they're not satisfied with uh, Purina cat chow, dog chow. Got to buy them steak and everything else. You got people who are attracted to their animals, trying to get sexual satisfaction from their pets. That's an abomination. That's beyond the pale. That's, 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 that's too much sin. I don't care if you like it or not. The abominable are going to hell. Via, and these are the men who want to be with men. God calls it an abomination. Women who want to be with women, sexually speaking. I don't even know how you do that. It's, it's not, uh, uh, and they, now they, they want to get married. In God's sight, you're not married. You're committing an abomination. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. I don't care what the president says. I can care less. And they are committing an abomination with you by sanctioning this evil. No wonder America is under judgment. No wonder the church is under judgment to the point that the church is basically shut down. The, the, the church building is shut down. The church is not shut down. 
the true church is not shut down. Whether they meet in the building or whether they don't. But God is not pleased with the demonic foolishness and evil that we have done in the American church and in the American society. And as I have said for years, God is slowly, mercifully, and graciously dismantling America piece by piece because of our abominations, our sins. And murderers, people who kill others, taking of somebody's life, and whoremongers, these are they who are going to the lake of fire. And whoremongers, these are the, if you will, heterosexual sinners. They, they may not be sinning beyond the pale, but they're doing evil and they're going to hell. Men and women who commit fornication, even in the church. Men and women who commit adultery. Whoremongers. Men are normally known as the whoremongers. The women are known as the whores. They're all going to hell. They're all going to the lake of fire. If they don't repent and believe in Jesus Christ and repent of their sins. And the sorcerers, we just got through talking about those or reading about those in the Word of God. Sorcerers, people who practice witchcraft and voodoo. People who practice rebelliousness and stubbornness and disobedience to the authority over them and against God. Idolaters, people who put anything or anybody before God. We have a whole bunch of idol worshipers in America and in the world today. And all liars, I'm reading the Word of God to you. You ask, who's going to hell? I'm telling you from the Word of God. I, I, I can't put nobody in heaven or hell. God is telling you right here from His Word who's going to hell, who's going to the lake of fire. If God didn't get you on the other ones, he got you on this one. All liars, all liars, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, dear friend, hell is bad news, but I have some good news for you. You don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven even though you don't deserve it. By simply believing in the Lord Jesus Christ who paid your sin debt. For Jesus Christ said so beautifully and so wonderfully and so powerfully. The greatest words ever said. I believe John 3.16. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for your sins was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God for you he paid your sin debt so get your eternal life insurance policy squared away today by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can live forever with him call on his name pray and ask him to save your soul and he will save you. For Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the eternal burning, tormenting hell, and saved to go to heaven to be with God in Jesus who loves you. So put your faith and trust in Christ. And in this day and time when we are for the first time in our lifetimes, every last one of us are under the imminent threat of death each and every day, every hour. I don't care if you're on your deathbed. I don't care if you have a strange cough. I don't care if you have a fever or what, what's going on in your life or you are in the hospital. Don't worry about it. Don't focus on getting healed right now. 
focus on getting saved and then uh, God may heal you. I don't know. I can't promise you that. But I can promise to you this. If you believe in Jesus Christ and pray and ask him to save you, he will save your soul based upon his holy word and promise. So, dear friend, if you want to be saved today, believe in your heart in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. And you can follow me in what we call the sinner's prayer, since you have never prayed it before. You can pray it with me right now, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, repeat after me. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I committed those sins the preacher talked about. The first set of sins. The lying, stealing, lusting in my heart out the people and things. Dishonoring, disrespecting, and disobeying my parents. Taking your holy name in vain. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And please forgive me of all of my sins. And please save, uh, 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 and based, based upon the fact that uh, I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins. That he was buried and he rose on the third day. I do believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, I know I deserve to go to hell just like a criminal deserves to go to jail. Please save my soul from hell. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and into my spirit. For I receive you as my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to truly repent of my sins past. Help me to turn from my old evil life. And help me never to be the same. Help me to follow you, Lord Jesus, in the new life. For it is in your name I do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and uh, rose from the dead by the power of God, you have believed the gospel, you have believed in Christ and on Christ, And so, allow me, dear friend, to say to you, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. It is free of charge. Just download it. Jesus Christ said in 10, John 10:9, 10, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com or whatever email you see on your platform and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you to help you grow in the faith and be the Christian that you want, that God wants you to be. And if you have a 
any prayer requests, please email that to us as well. And we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go in part two of Standing Between the Living and the Dead Memorial Prayer Devotional Evangelistic Service. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am emphasizing with you in this service the standing between the living and the dead memorial prayer devotional evangelistic service. This is the service where we do it all because we do remember the dead. We honor them by remembering them. And we honor them by praying for their families, but they're living. So we must minister to them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if, uh, and then we must minister to all families who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ on how to stay this plague, a pandemic, uh, or to start or, or to survive this plague pandemic, coronavirus plague. And there's a lot going on. And so we're trying to minister to and reach out to uh, multiple audiences in this one service. Standing between the living and the dead means you are remembering the dead, honoring the dead, but they're dead. But we're concerned, uh, and at the same time, we're ministering to the living. So, um, with that, for those families who are not uh, saved, we share the gospel, which I just did. And for those families that are saved, we encourage them to pray together. For the family that prays together, obeys together, and, uh, and obeys together, stays together, uh, I do believe. And they thrive together as well. With that said, Chuck Colson said, Manners, the habits of the people, are bred in family and in church. And the family should have church at home. Therefore, it isn't an issue of laws, but a proper Christian teaching of children in the family, first and foremost. And so the best and the best place to teach your children about God and uh, proper behavior is in family church family devotions, family altar, family worship, which should be had every day 
even under normal circumstances, the family ought to pray together and read the Bible together and sing the songs of Zion together on Sunday morning before they go to the larger church. And so, and, uh, and that's how the family and the church, if you will, work together. The larger church work together. But the family has the greater responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, let's pray for all families that name the name of Christ. Holy Father God, help every family that names your name to pray together, obey together, and stay together, particularly with an emphasis on Ephesians chapter 5 and 6 and 1 Peter chapter 3 a few verses in Colossians and other verses as well in your holy word. And Holy Father God, help us all to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek your face and to turn from our wicked ways. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for the salvation of all families by the power of your Holy Ghost who don't know your Savior. We pray for the lifting up and, uh, Lord, the calling laborers into your whited harvest field, for the fields are white unto harvest. Lord, uh, as you said and as you told us, we need to pray for laborers. Uh, and when we pray for laborers, what happens also, Lord, is we're convicted because we know we should be laborers too. So help us all, Lord, to be the shining lights and witnesses you would have us to be. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please read with me or recite with me the new Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father. Everybody should be saying this, reciting it. Most of you know it by heart here. And uh, you need to say it out loud. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of the same essence as the Father. Throughout him all things were made. That means he made you. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He was seen alive by Mary Magdalene and the other women, the disciples, and over 500 other brethren. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, he proceeds from the Father and the Son. And with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. 
we affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come. Amen. Our family verse, our family verses, Ephesians 5 and 6, today we're dealing with parents and primarily the father according to the scriptures. Verse 4 of chapter 6, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And this verse deals with in the family, parents. Not only the husband, but the mother. Not only the father, but the mother too. For she is supposed to help the father uh, in raising the children. And, uh, and she is to submit to him to raise them the way that uh, he wants them raised. And we have talked about this verse quite a bit. And uh, I will say to you today, uh, again, to fathers... Uh, most of us as fathers, we do not want to uh, have to chastise our children. Uh, I love my father, but the thing uh, that the biggest mistake my dad made in raising the four of us my three siblings was that he loved us too much and what I mean by that is he did not understand because no one taught him and so I don't I don't uh, make a big deal about it that love goes both ways in the sense that yes love will buy you some lawn and dawn cookies and a soda and sit down and laugh with you and so forth but love will also uh, punish you, chastise you when you do wrong and you do evil. And I learned negatively from my father that, yes, love your children and have fun with them and buy them things. And uh, God knows this to be true. And I, I believe this was the case with my father. And certainly it is the case with me and God knows this to be true ever since God blessed me to start a family there has never been a time that I've gone out and I didn't want to bring uh, my children something back and as that's, that's not a big deal I believe that's in all good fathers hearts and uh, I did it many times uh, but uh, as they grew older I stopped doing it a whole lot. You know, as they get older, uh, they want more expensive things, and then they're not appreciative and they're not grateful and uh, so forth and for what they do have. And uh, you have to teach them to be grateful and thankful for what they get as they grow older. Uh, my point is, uh, when your children do well, pat them on the back if they do evil you must pat them on the butt if you don't do both you can easily provoke them to anger they, they will eventually grow up and hate you if you're a parent who never nourishes them nurtures them uh, what I mean by uh, I meant to say nurture nurture them that is encourage them build them up uh, in prayer and the word and when they do good you pat them on the back you reward them they will be bitter towards you and uh, and will be provoked to wrath or anger when they get older and they, they've gone on they, 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 they're they going to have that in their hearts on the flip side if you don't chastise them for the evil you saw in them Trust me when I tell you, when they get older and out on their own, 
they will be provoked to anger towards you because you didn't do your job as a parent. See? And so you must do both. Learn that from my father, a, a man who loved his children, loved his family, but loved us too much. Put your hands down over here. Or right here. Right here. Put your hands down. He loved us too much, including my mother. He, in other words, and he let us have our way. And it was a disaster. The family was a disaster. Okay? My dad was a bishop. My mother was a preacher. The two boys got girls pregnant before marriage. The two girls got pregnant before marriage. That's a disaster for anybody's family, but especially a bishop's family and a, a, a woman who claimed to be a preacher. And I'm not mad at my parents. We, 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 we made peace a long time ago. Uh, well, once I got saved, I wrote them a letter, especially my dad, and I apologized to him for my bad attitude towards him growing up. And the truth of the matter is, I probably wouldn't have had the bad attitude in those teen years if he had whipped my butt like he should have. So let's read that verse again. And uh, make sure you get it, parents, especially fathers. And, and, I, and see, God is emphasizing the fathers here because we, we have in this world this crazy notion and idea that all parenting really is, is should be thrown upon the mother and that's not that's not biblical the husband is the head of the wife and of the family that includes the children and I've said it before and I'll say it again that fathers have way more insight into the children than the mother way more I know that's not popular but I know it to be true So let's read that verse one more time. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Be balanced. Love them, nurture them, um, encourage them when they do well. But if they are evil and they do evil, you need to chastise them and rebuke them and you need to deal with them every time. You can't let them get away with that. And you cannot reward evil. And I told you last week, I'm just going to mention it now. You cannot reward the evil child, the child who's doing evil, just like you reward the child who's doing good. You can't do that. That will provoke them to become angry and bitter and resentful and so forth. All right, with that said, let's pray. Let's pray for Christians. Let's pray for uh, fellow Christians, churches, uh, government leaders, law enforcement, medical workers and others, everybody, based upon First uh, Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray now for all of
of your children. All who name the name of Christ, help us all to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, and to turn from our wicked ways, and to repent in your sight and get back to you, Lord Jesus, our first love. And help us to get back to our first works as well. And Holy Father God, we pray that you would revive us again. We pray, Lord, now for everybody in the government, from the president on down around the world. We pray for salvation and spiritual and family life, financial, material, protection, and provision blessings upon all government ministers of yours in this country and around the globe. And we pray that you'll lead God and direct them to lead their respective areas in the way that you want them to go. We pray, Lord, for all folks in authority in every country of the world, including police officers and sheriffs, sheriff, uh, deputy sheriffs, and Lord, we pray that you will lead God and direct them to continue to fight for the peace of our communities. And uh, Holy Father God, we pray for the uh, protection of Israel and uh, the peace of Jerusalem. We pray, Lord, for the salvation of the lost in every region, every country of the world, uh, and for those in the media. We pray for the revival of those saved in this country and in the world and in the media. We pray for your protection of all Christians who are being persecuted around the world. And we pray that you will give them grace to deal with what they're dealing with in their trying hours and in their dying hours. We pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would uh, surround them with a band of your holy angels and a wall of your holy fire. And Holy Father God, we pray for the healing of those who are sick if they are born-again believers, help them to call for the elders of their church uh, to pray with them and help them to be willing to confess and be transparent about their sins. We pray for the healing of those, for the salvation and healing of those who don't know your Savior. And Holy Father God, we pray that you would draw people to yourself into your Holy Scriptures for salvation and comfort who have lost loved ones in the coronavirus plague uh, pandemic situation. And we pray for some by name, for there are millions of families who have lost uh, loved ones around the world, not only in America. And we pray for the family and friends of New Jersey nurse uh, Felicia, Felicia Mo Luna. We pray for the family and friends of Louisiana veteran Michael Marshall. We pray for the family and friends of California nurse Celia La Dizabal Marcos. We pray for the family and friends of New Jersey Dr. Francis Molinari. We pray for the family and friends of Missouri nurse Celia Yap Bonago. We pray for the family and friends of Missouri pastor and EMT worker Billy Birmingham Sr. We pray for the family and friends of Florida Dr. Luis uh, Caldera Nives. And we pray for the family and friends of New Jersey EMT Kevin Leva. And we pray for the family and friends of Indiana firefighter John Schofstall. And we pray for the family and friends of Massachusetts nurse Rose Taldon. We commit these souls into your hands and these families into your hands 
save those who are lost, revive those who are saved, and comfort them all. And now, Holy Father God, we pray for all of the people. Lord, who have sent in prayer requests, we pray, Lord, for their salvation, spiritual, we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, financial, material, protection and provision blessings upon them all, all of the people who have sent in prayer requests. And Lord, we thank you for your holy word, and I believe your holy word, Lord Jesus, asking ye shall receive, seeking ye shall find, knocking it shall be opened unto you. Lord, hear their prayers for their special requests as well. And we pray for just a few who have sent in prayer requests. Uh, these are new prayer requests. We pray for Rose, for you to deliver her son from all evil forces and heal him from all pain in his right hip and leg. We pray for James. Please bless and prosper his gospel ministry in Kenya. We pray, Lord, for Stanley. Heal him permanently of kidney infection. Empower him with the spirit of faith to serve you and his, with his whole heart. Bless his family financially and otherwise. Help him to graduate uh, from college. We pray, Lord, for Denzel. Heal his father of all problems. Help him to recover from his stroke and minor memory loss as well. We pray for Marie, for her family members to be healed, for their house to be repaired, for money to buy medicine and other supplies. We pray that you protect Marie and her family from the coronavirus uh, plague as well. We pray for Rodrigo for blessings on their church and ministry. We pray for Sib, for him to do well in his in-service training at a company. We pray for Doris, for her to grow stronger in you, for her son to stop drinking, for her other son who is in jail to come home, for her daughter to stop her adultery, for blessings upon her grandchildren as well. And Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the people who have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior and uh, through the preaching of the gospel through this ministry and uh, also the people who have rededicated their lives to you. Even though we don't give that invitation, we thank you for these who have done so. And we pray that you will help all of the others that we're not praying for by name this morning. Lord, uh, we pray for them to grow in the faith and to be strong in the faith and to stand strong in the faith and not quit. Lord, we pray for Hap. We pray for Cheryl. We pray for Josh. We pray for OG. We pray for Junior. We pray for Mo. And we pray for uh, Bob. And Holy Father God, we pray uh, for these folks to grow in the faith and be the Christians you want them to be. And we pray for the people who have recommitted their lives as well. Uh, we pray for MB. We pray for Don. We pray for Cecil. We pray for Ferdinand, Derry, Katrina, and Tim. We commit all of these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, our devotional reading today is titled Experiencing God Despite the Distractions. This is very important by Dr. A.W. Tozer. He goes on to share that in the normal course of things, a certain number of distractions are bound to come to each one of us. But if we learn to be inwardly still, these can be rendered relatively harmless. It would not be hard to 
compile a long list of names of Christians who carried upon their shoulders the burdens of state or the responsibilities of business and yet managed to live in great inward peace with the face of the Lord in full view. They have left us a precious legacy in the form of letters, journals, hymns, and devotional books that witness to the ability of Christ to calm the troubled waters of the soul as he once calmed the troubled sea, the waves on the Sea of Galilee. And today, as always, those who listen can hear his still small voice above the earthquake and the whirlwind, while the grace of God will enable us to overcome inevitable distractions. We dare not presume upon God's and uh, throw ourselves, presume upon God's aid, rather, and throw ourselves upon open to unnecessary ones. The roving imagination and inquisitive interest in other people's business, preoccupation with external affairs beyond what is absolutely necessary, these are certain to lead us into serious trouble sooner or later. The heart is like a garden and must be kept free from weeds and insects. To expect the fruits and flowers of paradise to grow in an untended heart is to misunderstand completely the processes of grace and the ways of God with men. Only grief and disappointment can result from continued violation of the divine principles that underlie the spiritual life. Let's pray. Holy Father God in heaven, <clears throat> we praise you and we thank you for this important time together around your holy word, around prayer, and uh, praying for others around devotional, strong de devotional uh, uh, emphasis. And Lord, help us to use this as our foundation for the remainder of this day, to pray without ceasing, to meditate on your holy word and to obey it, and Lord, to be the shining lights and witnesses you want us to be. And we pray now for the salvation of millions, for the revival of millions by the power of your Holy Ghost, as you have unleashed your Holy Word and your Holy Gospel into the world. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friends, I have already preached the Gospel in this service, but if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, Hear these words from Jesus Christ himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe in your heart like Jesus said. In Jesus. That he, and understand that he suffered bled and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day. And all you have to do is believe in him and call on him for your soul's salvation to get your soul saved from that awful place called hell to heaven to be with God. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time, let's all stand for our closing prayer. And our next time, hopefully, will be in about 10 minutes to 15 minutes uh, as we go into the Just Jesus Sunday morning evangelistic service, gospel light 
house of prayer. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for what you have done, for what you're doing, for what you will do. Thank you for giving us the grace and the strength, Lord, to do what we know to do and to do it right uh, and to do it for your glory, praise, and honor, for the salvation of the lost and for the revival of the saved. In Jesus Christ.